All right, guys, what I want to do now is I want to talk about implant failures that don't come in, in a way that we would normally anticipate them. This is a combination, multifactorial failure, just like I mentioned in some of the earlier videos. And this one comes from a couple of reasons. Now, the first one is this. Uh, this solution has zero anterior posterior spread. We have two implants in the lateral position, nothing in the centrals, and this patient wore this for five years before it failed. So you're saying, well, five years and then it failed, well, what happened? It must have been the patient's fault. Nope, it's 100% the doctor's fault and here's why. When we look at this solution this way, these two implants are in a line. The one, they're in a line with, alignment with each other, which means, if I hold it like this, and they close down and a mandibular tooth comes up and hits this point here. It wants to bend it. It wants to bend this solution like that. So every time a force hits here, it wants to rotate this solution like this and bend. So there's no anterior posterior spread because these are in a line. They're in a line with each other. And so when that happens, over time, you have what's called cyclic fatigue. Cyclic fatigue is, is very uh, easy to explain. If you've ever had a coat hanger and you want to break the coat hanger in half, if you just bend it back and forth really, really fast, it'll break right in half. It'll just cycle fatigue. That's what happened here. And this particular uh, solution broke around five years. In my experience, in my clinical experience, typical cyclic fatigue occurs between the three and five year time frame. That's the time frame it takes for us to hit this enough times down here and to make this bend enough times for this to break. All right, so first thing is the solution that the doctor chose was an inferior solution. If we had from a mechanical perspective, not necessarily from an aesthetic perspective because they may have done this because people have talked from the podium and in the literature about how you can get a really nice pontic uh, papillophil, right? You can get a papillophil if you use Pontex, so they're saying two implants in the lateral and then leave these alone because you can get a better aesthetics. Well, I can tell you that the guy that had this had a low lip line, so I'm not sure that, you know, a low smile line, I'm not sure that they were thinking about that, but nevertheless, if you could have gotten one more implant, or two for that matter, somewhere further out from here, you would have started to form a triangle. So let me show you here. If you could, instead of having these both in the same line like this, if you had one more implant out here in front of this line, you could have had a small triangle, which would have been a small amount of anterior posterior spread, and that would have significantly increased your mechanical success. The other thing is, is that by placing these small implants in the lateral position, because the lateral anatomically, from the, from the lingual to the facial, has very little bone. So that bone is usually five to six millimeters thin. It doesn't allow us to put a big implant in there. And you can see that the, the clinician who placed this used some relatively small implants for a lateral position. So when you do that, you got small implants, what breaks easier, a small branch or a big branch? That's right, a small branch. So if I was gonna do this and I was concerned about it, I would over-engineer it by adding more small branches because if you put a bunch of small branches in your hand and you try to break them at the same time, it's hard to break. So one small branch is easy to break, two small branches is pretty easy to break, but if you put four small branches, maybe you can't break it. So if you'd put another small implant here and here and had four and created a little bit of an anterior posterior spread by having two here and maybe two out here, you could have had a solution that might have lasted forever, okay? Now, what we need to do is talk about the second part of this. So treatment planning was part of it, cyclic fatigue was part of it, but the second part that I wanna to talk to you about is implant design. Because way too often we hear people talk about implant design does not matter. Just pick the cheapest implant, put it in the mouth and rock on doctor. And I could not disagree more because these implants are made from different grades of metal. Not all implants are made from the same type of metal. Most are made from titanium, but there's different grades to titanium. There's commercially pure one, two, and three. There's grade five, which is typically called the titanium alloy. When we compare the titanium alloy, it's nearly 40% stronger than uh, commercially pure titanium four, grade four. So let's say, without calling out anybody or naming any implant companies, let's say that this particular implant was made from a weaker metal. Well, it means that at five years, it fractures here and it fractures there, you have catastrophic failure and you gotta do the whole thing over. 
But what if, what if, what if we had used the titanium alloy that's nearly 40% stronger and at five years it wasn't a problem? And maybe, maybe because we'd used a stronger one, we might not have, never have had a problem. We'll never know because obviously we have the failure now. But what we want to do as we plan these cases is we want to prevent these failures. How do we prevent them? Choose a stronger implant. Put in a stronger implant. If you don't believe me that implants are all different and that they have different attributes, both in strength of materials by itself, then answer this. Are all titanium golf clubs the same quality? And you know they're not. You, you know that there are some titanium golf clubs that, char that charge a premium for those golf clubs. Uh, maybe you're a wine drinker. What if I said to you, all wine is wine. Just pour me a glass of wine and it's all the same. Uh, no, we, we know that's not the case, right? So there's many things in life that we, that we uh, partake in and participate in, and we go, no, they're not all the same. Uh, a first class ticket is not the same as a coach ticket, right? Uh, red wine that, you know, that comes from Napa can be very, very nice. And one that comes from your local Zipmark in a box, uh, Boone's Farm, you know, might not be what you want to drink on your, uh, you know, daughter's wedding night or something. So the point is, is that things come in different quality and these implants come in different quality metals. So choose an implant that's made from a really good quality metal. And my recommendation is medical grade, uh, CP5, not, not CP5, grade five, which is your medical grade, grade 23, titanium alloy, nearly 40% stronger than all the other products on the market. And you might never have this problem. So summing it up, implant design matters. Secondly, placing the right number of implants in the right location can really create a solution that might last forever.